Hey Luke here with CaptainCarp.com and today I'm going to do a little bank fishing uh, on a spot I don't think I've ever filmed before. And I'm here in my, my garage. It's normally messier than this. So this is me on a good day. But I've got to pick out what I need to bring. I'm going to bring my three rod travel set, my long distance carp rods. I'm going to be doing catfish and carp uh, fishing for sure. Um, I'll probably bring some boilies for carp bait. It's also good for catfish. I've got I've got a thing of my Jello Ponco sweet corn pack bait I need to use up. All right, let's get going. Woo, it is hot. I wish the boys could come with me, but they've got friends they're playing with and it is hot and this is not a particularly safe spot for kids. I think I said some nonsense about trying to pack light. Fail. This place right here is tidal, and right now the tide's going out. See all that water's getting sucked out of here. So the current's trying to pull my rigs towards me. All right, I got a shady spot to rest and watch my rods, got the alarms on. Now it's time to wait and see what happens. Hopefully this guy's gonna catch a striper just so I get some video footage here. I'm sitting here just watching the water and there's just lots of little bait fish, something silvery down there, just flipping around. Tons of them. I'm guessing they're gizzard shad. Makes me wish I brought my cast net. I've got carp bait on all my rigs, though I could very easily catch a catfish on any of them. But uh, I think I might uh, put on a little piece of earthworm under a bobber right here and see if I can't pull out a panfish and maybe try a little cut bait for catfish we'll see i'm not super serious about this so i'm not getting out of my chair for you okay we're just we're, we're taking this easy Ugh. there we go i didn't get skunked you know i said i was going to use it for cut bait i just realized that that's going to mean re-rigging my rods and i'm feeling way too lazy for that right now so uh we might just catch a few sunnies for a few seconds and I'm 40 years old. I reserve the right to be lazy every once in a while. Check this out. This one's got a little orange on his tag there. Might be part shell cracker or something. It's been a little quiet. When it gets quiet, I get bored. When I get bored, I do weird things. So, I think I am gonna bust out some of these earthworms and I'm gonna make myself a little custom earthworm zig rig. Yeah, we'll just see what happens. This will catch just about anything. Carp, bass, catfish, bluegill, we'll see what happens. All right, just hooked up on the earthworms. Let's see if I can get this landing before it gets sucked into the pipe. Nice little blue catfish on earthworms. I'm really glad I hooked into that catfish now because it taught me some valuable lessons. I cannot let any fish I hook get anywhere near this tunnel or I am in deep poo, okay? So uh, yeah, mental note, mental note there. Casting these worms out, the fish hit it before I could even get it into the bite alarms. Little baby channel cat. Yeah, that's the problem with using worms for carp bait. Everything else eats it. You just can't keep the catfish off it long enough to get a carp. 
All right, just saw a big old channel cat or something jumping out there. So we're gonna get a little serious about some catfish. Caught myself a little eel here. We're gonna chuck this under the bobber and see if we can't catch that big old catfish. All right, there we go. Got the eel underneath the bobber. We're we'll give it a try. King. Look at that eel. That eel is just going crazy. Something's got it. Oh, somebody killed my eel. Oh, he's still a little bit alive. All right, let's, we're gonna try it again. He's still got a little, little life in him. Seen a bunch of big catfish and a really big gar rolling right in here. And uh, man, I wish I had a lot more live fish. The carp fishing has been a bit disappointing, but I wouldn't mind coming back here with a bunch of live bluegill. Man, this has been uh, intense here. Some massive hits on that eel. Man, that last hit pretty much killed off my eel. I'm gonna drift it through one more time, and then I'm gonna chunk him up a little bit and see if that helps. Oh, what's going on here? There we go. Got a catfish. Well, not massive. Not as big as the fish I've been seeing jumping, but hey, biggest fish I've caught so far. The tide's changed direction on me, so now I'm just dropping my bobber out and letting the current take it. I'm getting a hit about every minute. This is fast action. I'm losing so many of these because I'm using an 8 aught hook. I should be using something smaller. I'm going from an 8 aught down to uh, about a 2 aught. We're gonna wacky worm some eel here. It's a powerful thing, man. You got the tide changing right as the sun's setting. Two most important factors when fishing for catfish happen at the same time. Oh, here we go. Big hit. Oh, yeah. There we go. Smaller hook. Smaller hook did the trick. That's the rule of thumb. If you're getting a lot of bites and you're missing fish, go smaller bait, smaller hook. Another blue cat. All right, just try to drift that right along the current seam. This is going to be awesome. That bobber's just going out, and as soon as it gets to the edge of the swift current, it's just going pound. Oh, there we go. It's how it is sometimes. You go carp fishing and end up just having the best cat fishing ever. There we go. Another blue catfish. And that eel's still in perfect shape, man. This bait never quits. Well, I've just caught more catfish in 20 minutes than I have my whole day sitting here. So I pulled up my carp gear to get it out of my way. And I'm just gonna throw this bobber after some more blues. Oh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, how you doing? Well, there we go, guys. We're losing our sunlight, but man, the bite is hot. I've caught, what, half a dozen blue cats on this one piece of eel. That bait is so tough, it just never comes off. All right, let's get them back in. Man, I really wish I had my glasses with me, but they're back at the car, and I'm not going all the way back there for my glasses. Okay, I said it was my last cast, like five casts ago, so I need to start getting all my gear up and getting out of here. I might leave the bobber out while I put away my stuff, though. Well, half of one eel turned out to be a crazy great bait today. Well, there you go. Something hit hard and broke my swivel, took my bait and hook, I think it's time for me to call it. This has been awesome, but I think Becca was expecting me home a little while ago. Well guys, it's another beautiful day and I want another crack at those catfish. But this time I'm gonna be a little bit better prepared because I know what to expect. So first mistake I made yesterday was I brought night crawlers, Canadian night crawlers, and they just die in this heat. You need a cooler really. Um, so instead I'm gonna use locally dug worms and I'm gonna go to my worm stump here. It just rained today. So there should be tons of worms under here. Ho ho! Yeah, look at that. As they're used to this heat, they won't die like the night crawlers will. I can count 20 worms right here. Maybe let's take four or five and we should be good. Just put some mud, some leaves in there. Well, this time I'm gonna bring a lot less gear because I know what to expect. And I'm just bringing catfish gear. Another thing I'm gonna do different is I'm not gonna fish all day. I'm just gonna get there about an hour before the tide changes and before sunset, and I'm gonna fish for only about an hour or two. So I've got this pretty good sized float. 
with a quick change swivel underneath it, which is really nice because I can put on a number 12 hook, catch some bait, then just switch out snelled hooks to start catching some catfish. Well, it looks like yesterday's repeating itself. When it got close to the tide change, all the panfish disappeared. And I couldn't catch one to save my life. But I'm still seeing bait fish uh, flashing down there. So I'm gonna pull out the cast net and uh, see if I can't catch some bait fish. Throwing a cast net in shallow, rocky ground like this is super dodgy. If my net touches the bottom, I'll be lucky if I get it back in one piece. So I've got to throw the net and retrieve it as soon as it hits the, the, the water. I can't let it sink hardly at all. All right. All right. A lot of thunder and lightning coming my way. Could get really nasty. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Something's nailing it. Taking it. Oh. Oh, just swam off with my bait. While the current's coming towards me, I'm hooking the fish behind the dorsal fin. When the current starts going away from me, I'm gonna hook them through the mouth with the point sticking out. Ooh. -hoo. Well, the wind's gone and the rain's calmed down. All right, let's go get some fish. All right, let's do this. Oh yeah. Woo. There we go, nice blue. Oh, here we go, here we go. Yeah. There we go. I love this landing net. It's made by Daiwa, and this is exactly what it's meant for. Over in Japan and China, people do a lot of urban fishing, and they have to, you know, net fish just like in these situations where you're standing above the water on rocks or on a pier. And uh, this is what this is made for, and it's just absolutely awesome. I've got a very uh, carp friendly Drenham British carp net on there. And I machined an adapter to let me put the British threads onto a Japanese landing net. I love this thing. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh, big car. Oh, there it is, there it is. Yeah. Another nice blue. Oh, look at that. Whoop. This has got to be like an alien abduction for them. They get beamed up into the light. <laughs> well, it's pouring down rain. All my rigs are messed up. I'm out of bait. It's time to go home, but thanks for watching. We've had a ball. Don't forget to click subscribe. We put out new videos every Saturday morning. Take care, guys.